My name is Edward Kim. I'm the head knife maker at Red Horse Knife Works. I was previously a private security contractor and MMA competitor. Um, I got into knives in college. Um, a jewelry instructor showed me how to make my first knife and um, it's, it's all uh, been downhill from there. Um, Red Horse Knife Works is basically a mid-tech company. We make semi-custom uh, knives for the general public, uh, mostly law enforcement and military. We use production methods, customized detailing, um, which allows um, the knives to be a little more affordable than your average custom, which could cost anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000. Um, our knives are priced half that, but the customer still kind of feels like they get a custom knife. Um, so that's basically the, the main theory behind Red Horse Knife Works. So basically how we first get the blanks in is uh, they're CNC machined um, on a big machine that uh, accurately controls uh, the cutting method. And uh, this accomplishes about 90% of what has to be done on the handle. So once we receive all the parts from our outsourcing companies, we begin in-house machining on the handles, which involves cutting out the bearing pocket and setting the stop pin hole. From there, this is the, the heat treat process. Uh, it's basically raising the steel the blade steel to a critical temperature. Once that blade reaches critical temperature, the molecules inside are moving so rapidly that they begin to harden. And once we quench it in our aluminum plates, you're basically freezing those molecules in place. So you end up having a very, very hard steel. Uh, after that, uh, we surface grind the blade. Because of the heat treat, um, the blade starts to do funky stuff. It'll grow, it'll shrink, um, it'll become uneven. So we bring it to our surface grinder, which basically uh, grinds it flat once again after the heat treat process. Um, it's not as intense as the lapping, um, it's just a, a quick touch up uh, for after the, the heat treat phase. Once the blade is surface ground, um, we're able to set the actions of the knife, um, which means closing and opening position. So we're gonna set the detent, which is basically just a very, very small 1 16th inch ball bearing um, that holds the blade into place um, using a detent. So we use a number 54 carbide drill bit and we drill a spot hole through the titanium handle and into the blade. From there, we just press fit a 1 16th inch ball bearing into the handle and give it a test fit. Once we've set the detent, it's now time to set the lock. Um, this is probably the most important part of uh, the entire process. Um, if this goes bad, then pretty much the entire knife has, has gone to waste. So basically what we do is we assemble the knife, lay out the scribe line where our lock is going to be set on the blade. From there, I disassemble the knife, put it in our fixture um, that's specifically made for setting our locks. What this will do is it'll grind a radius into the blade and uh, allow the lock to slip into place. Once the lock is set, um, we are pretty much have a functional knife. It'll open properly and it'll close properly. Uh, from there we could do all the blade grinding. And that's pretty much the giving the blade its heart and soul and really what makes it look like a knife. do this by using our vertical grinder and uh, fixtures that I've set up to set the proper angle of the blade bevel. It's very important that the blade angles are 
consistent all the way through. Otherwise, the knife will not look even, and the blade grinds uh, will be wavy and um, non-functional. So once the blade grind is set, um, we logo the knife, we put our fancy little logo on it, um, give it one more test fit, and once uh, I know everything is proper and functional, I'll put the final edge and then fully assemble the knife, install the clip, and uh, send it off.